Hey guys, Drifter here. Today we're going to be taking a break from Call of Duty and instead we're going to look at the upcoming Battlefield 6 release. There have been a ton of crazy rumors about this that I didn't really believe and then some leaks came out from the same person of screenshots of the upcoming trailer that roughly confirmed some of the rumors and they're just insane and it also looks insanely promising. I know this is a COD channel and I'm probably considered a COD super fan at this point but I've always enjoyed Battlefield going back to like Battlefield 1943 and these classic games. We played them here on this channel. Channel. We played some uh, Modern Combat and Bad Company. We did Battlefield 3 and 4 and 5 and 1, and we didn't do a whole lot of the Battlefront games, but I've always kind of dipped my toes in this franchise and generally had a good time with it. So I'm really excited to see what EA is going to throw down next for the next Battlefield because competition is good, and having two good major FPS games is better than having one, in my opinion. The gameplay you're seeing right now is from Battlefield 4. I got back on there last night and played in a squad with J Hub, Proc Prime, Echo the Bat Pony, and Sexy Uncle Dave, who you may know from uh, Commenticate or Internet Comment Etiquette. And what we did is basically let Sexy Uncle Dave carry us since he's kind of the Battlefield expert. And Battlefield 4 was really interesting. The gameplay you're seeing is from a game that's eight years old. The graphics have aged quite well. Not perfect, not truly modern anymore, but still very good, very pretty looking game. I think that the vehicle combat's amazing, the scale of the map is amazing, the levolution is amazing. A lot of the gameplay fundamentals are good, except I'm not a big fan of the gunfights. The movement feels a little bit slower, a little bit clunkier, and the bullet velocity is really low, but they fixed that in Battlefield 5. So, uh, I don't know, kind of a mixed bag. Some parts of this game aged great, and some parts of them not so much, but I do hope you enjoy the gameplay. Let's now finally talk about the rumors. The trailer is supposed to be coming in June. I think that EA has pretty much made this official now. And then the full release is supposedly coming in holiday 2021, which isn't official, but if the trailer comes out six months ahead of time, unless it's cyberpunk, then it's probably going to be coming out in the fall. Battlefield 6 is supposed to be a minor reboot of the franchise with the goal of modernizing it. We've spent a lot of time in uh, World War One and World War Two and Star Wars and other places, and the continuity of Battlefield 3 and 4 and modern combat and stuff has kind of been lost, so they're kind of rebooting the story, and they're setting it about 10 years into the future, kind of following that modern warfare model of setting it just about a decade ahead so that they can have an excuse to use a lot of more experimental technology and pretend that it's normal and not super rare. So I guess it'll be set in about 2030, 2031, something like that. And I'm going to guess that it's going to be a completely different story and not necessarily connected to Battlefield 3 or 4. But there's some pretty big gameplay changes coming too, and that's of course what we're all most interested in here. I should probably clarify, especially at this point moving forward, that all of these are rumors, and basically none of these rumors are confirmed by EA, but the Battlefield community and EA seems to be embracing them. The leaks and leaked images roughly back them up, and since it's positive, nobody seems to care, but these are rumors. So the first one I saw is that it's no longer going to be 32v32 or 64 player matches, that's dinosaur stuff now. They're going to be 128 player matches for standard, which is 64v64, or almost an entire Warzone Verdansk Battle Royale lobby right there on the same map, but with respawns. I did see some later rumors floating around the internet, suggesting 100v100 and 200v200 and 250v250 up to 500 player matches. That sounds cool, but that also sounds like my dad works at Microsoft conversations that you had in seventh grade about when Halo 7 was going to come out and stuff. It doesn't seem technologically feasible at the moment. A server, even like just playing chess or like a little simple mobile game, would probably cry with 500 people connected to it, much less something big and complex like Battlefield. I'd love to see it. I think 100 v 100 would be the upper end of what servers could handle these days. But who knows, maybe it'll turn into something awesome. But personal opinion, I love the scale of the battles in Battlefield. Those Battlefield moments, the building falling down, the the, the, at the, the feeling of having the ability to explore the whole city, almost like Battle Royale before Battle Royale was a thing, is one of the things that's core to the franchise. So the more players and the bigger the maps, the better in my opinion. Supposedly the class system is returning because that's core to Battlefield. They've had that time after time after time again, and they're constantly tinkering with it. This time they decided to allow for some changing of perks or passive attributes, a la Call of Duty, but keeping it grounded and realistic so we're not going to have like Overwatch kind of stuff going around. That's a little bit surprising for me because as a Battlefield soldier, historically you've all kind of been the same minus your equipment. And honestly, Battlefield 4 had a pretty deep class system just with the four weapon sets per role. You could have your... Each uh, class, engineer, recon, support, assault, whatever, could have four different weapon sets, and each one was limited to certain pieces of equipment, and that in and of itself was like a class system, so adding some perks on top of that's definitely moving it more Call of Duty-like. 
Speaking of more Call of Duty-like, one of the most important rumored changes is that the gunplay is supposed to be snappier, faster, and the bullets are going to hit people more like they do in Call of Duty. And I think that this is easy to do because Battlefield 5 basically did that. I know that not a lot of you probably played Battlefield 5 and not a lot of people are playing it now, but one of the things that that game did right is that it took the gunplay, it made it snappier, it made it faster, it made the animations look better, the hip fire was not as important, hip fire especially like in Battlefield 1 kind of got absurd, and they increased the bullet velocity. So this is one of the big, and the damage as well, so this is one of the struggles that you'll see with me here playing Battlefield 4 is that I'm still basically playing Call of Duty in my head, I'm not accounting for the much slower bullet velocity, which is like one third of what the guns are in real life, and the amount of shots to kill, and the super damage loss over range, but in Battlefield 4, it was closer to hit scan, sorry, Battlefield 5, it was closer to hit scan, the bullets went really fast, they hit people, and in my opinion, that made it more satisfying and much easier to play, not only for Call of Duty fans, but fans of other games that are coming in to check out Battlefield, so if they keep that Battlefield 5 fast bullet velocity and snap happy gunplay, I think I'm going to be very happy with it, and I think a lot of other people are going to be happy with it as well. Battlefield 6 is rumored to have 13 maps at launch, all of which are going to be set in Eurasia or fake Europe for the most part, and fake Asia, just kind of that continent. We don't really do a whole lot of stuff in the Americas in Battlefield, and that's okay with me. I get to see enough games set in America, so Eurasia works. 13 maps at launch is kind of impressive for a modern game. Most modern multiplayer games are only launching with like a couple of maps. 13 is really more what I would expect from a proper AAA studio like 10 years ago. These days I'm expecting like four to six. So this is double normal and I think that's gonna be really good as long as these maps are good. Supposedly they have gotten rid of the spawning into vehicles like in Battlefield 4 you can just redeploy directly into the helicopter directly into the jet or to the tank or anything that's available. This time you have to spawn at the base and walk over there to get into them though I hope that it prevents people from kind of camping the vehicle spawns because that can get kind of brutal they'll just blow up your helicopters and leave you trapped. And I also just kind of generally hope that the vehicles are a little bit less oppressive. Playing last night with Uncle Dave reminded me just how dangerous a good pilot could be in Battlefield and just how powerful a fully loaded tank could be. And the game was more so a vehicle battle than it was an infantry battle. And I, I love vehicles. I love tanks and planes. When I play these games, that's mostly what I do. But it was just a little bit much for me. Supposedly the Levolution is coming back, kind of like the big building falling down, which I'll inevitably have gameplay of here somewhere. But instead of just like one or two things you can trigger per map, it's supposed to be more fundamental to the gameplay, and it's supposed to be more widespread with lots of different things that you can Levolutionize or flatten or destroy or change. Hearing it described as such immediately gave me some Bad Company vibes, and if I'm remembering this correctly, because I didn't play the most Bad Company, but Bad Company, most of the buildings were destroyable, so people couldn't just really camp in any structure indefinitely, and that was one of the best parts about the game if you had the tank wasn't necessarily killing people, but it was busting snipers out of towers by flattening the towers that they were in, kind of like real life. And having that level of destruction, having most of the buildings destroyable, or at least, you, you know, you shoot them and they turn into like rubble and they open up a whole lot so it's easy to shoot inside would be really nice. And it'd be really nice to see it return to a Battlefield game. Battlefield 5 destructibility just wasn't quite right. You can only like partially destroy the building and it was just kind of awkward. I'd like to be able to just flatten in my buildings. There were some leaked images that showed the map. They showed, you know, jets flying around and people fighting. They showed one island map, which is apparently somewhere in Japan, and then they showed a kind of dusk, maybe night city map with a spaceship launching in the background, like a spaceport you're fighting over. So they looked good. The I'm not going to show you the leaked screenshots. You can look them up on uh, Bravo Intel, but I don't want to get a copyright strike. But they did look quite nice. As far as skill-based matchmaking is concerned, the leaker did, or uh, rumor guy, did talk about it a little bit. He said it's going to be less strict than Call of Duty. It's going to be more like Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 5 squad-based matchmaking. Sorry, Battlefield 1 and 4, 5. They just label these games so weirdly. Battlefield 4, 1, 5, something, who knows. Anyway, they said that it's going to be squad-based matchmaking that's more about balancing your squad than anything else and less so the average on either team. I guess they're just going to go with random on that one because with you know a huge amount of players, it's almost always going to average out to one. I never really had a problem with skill-based matchmaking in Battlefield 5 or 1 or any previous titles, so keeping roughly the same system should make me and most gamers happy, and it should be less strict than Call of Duty. Call of Duty skill-based matchmaking has been getting 
a little bit silly lately, especially in Warzone, where you're supposed to have a big variation in your enemy skill quality. I pretty much only get sweats. There were some weirder things that showed up. They had robot dogs with guns on them, and you're probably thinking Infinite Warfare Cyber Dogs, but it's more like the Boston Dynamics dogs that are currently in development for the military to carry supplies around, but they put little machine guns on them so they can kind of plot around and shoot at people automatically. There did appear to be something like a Juggernaut soldier from Modern Warfare 19, somebody in heavy armor with a minigun. We don't know if that's part of the campaign, a uh, class, a uh, special pickup, because there's quite a few special pickups in Battlefield games, like super weapons, you can only get off the ground so maybe something like that and a slight possibility of the scrapped crash landing system that was supposed to be in battlefield 5 coming back to see the light of day which is basically when somebody shoots down your plane or vehicle and it says vehicle disabled instead of blowing up very soon you have the opportunity to try to crash land it where perhaps everybody will take a little bit of damage in the landing, but the vehicle won't explode and you won't die. You can still land safely. You won't have to parachute out and float down and be all vulnerable. Though that is, again, just a rumor. It'd be nice if it's real, but still just a rumor. That's not all today. There's rumors about Battle Royale returning to the Battlefield franchise, which I think it's perfect. That's what it's made for. Battlefield has basically been doing Battle Royale since before Battle Royale was a thing. This is supposedly going to be free to play and coming in March 22, uh, March 2022. So I'm assuming that's three or four months after the main game comes out. And it's roughly designed to copy the Warzone business model that you'll level your guns and your unlocks and all your cool stuff in base Battlefield. And then in the Battle Royale one is where you really get to use it against other people. The scale is supposed to be massive. We don't have a lot of details on it. They, I, knew, I do know that Battlefield 5 had Firestorm, which was its own Battle Royale, and I thought that was really good. Or I'll say it wasn't half bad. It wasn't flawless, but it was really interesting. I like the fact that you could get tanks near the end and still bust them with rockets. And I really enjoyed the zone of fire. It was called Firestorm, and your zone was just this wall of fire that destroyed anything. So running back into the zone, camping the zone, cheesing the zone like PUBG just was not an option, and it played so much better that way. There have been basically two different rumors about the campaign. The first rumor and more interesting one is that the campaign will be revolutionary, unique, groundbreaking, amazing. That's a, that's a big promise for a multiplayer that always, already sounds pretty groundbreaking, but we can hope. And supposedly it's not necessarily a strict linear story that you play through, but instead it's you are building a specialist unit, and then you decide which superpower to fight for, either the US or Russia in this game. Oddly, no China. Haven't seen anything about there being a Chinese faction, Chinese battle bad guys, Chinese good guys, Chinese maps. It's kind of funny how that works. Now that EA is releasing in China, they're working really hard not to offend the Chinese censors these days, but that's, that's pretty much every game in general. And the campaign is more about managing and improving your team, recruiting different people, recruiting specialists, training them, equipping them, and then playing through the missions with the right people, which honestly reminds me a little bit of old school Rainbow Six, like old 90s or an early 2000s Rainbow Six, where you'd play as Ding Chavez and you'd have to recruit your team and keep them alive all the way to the end. Or perhaps more like Bad Company, but if they were all mercenaries and just, you know, for hire, that could be kind of fun. Then we had other leaks saying that there was no campaign, that they're just, they were just only going to do multiplayer, which would be fine by me, but a campaign's always nice. There's quite a lot of rumors surrounding the fact that the game might be free or bundled into the Xbox Game Pass. And this makes sense given that EA and Xbox have always worked together on Battlefield. Like, Battlefield was always, on, at least on console, designed around Xbox for as long as I can remember. And they've been more brand loyal to that than Activision has been to Xbox or PlayStation. They kind of move around a little bit. So if it comes out in the Games Pass for Xbox One, that wouldn't be surprising at all, but it's not confirmed. As far as what it's releasing on, obviously PC and current gen consoles, which is Xbox One X and PS5. And last gen consoles all are supposed to be cross-playing together. And I'm really hoping that the last gen releases are going to be much better looking than Cyberpunk on Xbox One. If this game is what they are promising, these massive maps and huge player counts and scale and epic graphics, I'm a little bit terrified of what they're going to have to cut in order to make them function on much, perhaps even almost 10 year old consoles. Now, DICE said officially that it's next gen only, and then EA corrected them a couple of weeks later, saying that it will release on last generation, being PS4 and Xbox One, but it is designed for current generation consoles. So I think that uh, should be a real heads up for you guys that you should definitely try to get current gen or PC and avoid that PS4 version because it's going to be brutal. Then finally, Battlefield Mobile is officially in the works. There's very little information about Battlefield Mobile right now, 
but it sounds cool, sounds interesting. I'll definitely play it and give it a go. Uh, I'd like, I would love if it were like a battle royale or like a proper shooter, like main battlefield, that'd be really fun. Mobile controls are really hard for me, but some of the mobile games are getting quite nice these days. Guys, that is all for the Battlefield rumors and leaks. I hope that you learned something useful. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. And personally, I kind of cannot wait to see what DICE is working on. I, I just hope they kill it and blow it out of the water, and I just have a bunch of good games to play next year. Drifter out.